Bill Snyder has been at Kansas State for over 300 games in the last quarter century, winning an awful lot of football games and doing particularly well against Texas. He's six and one all time against the Longhorns, and he's done that by slowing down a slew of All-American caliber running backs. And Anthony, Texas is riding another good one in here today in Deontay Foreman. Well, America knows Leonard Fournette, Christian McCaffrey. I think Deontay Foreman is the best running back in college football. We'll get a good look at him today, rushing for nearly 150 yards per game. Also his brother, Amante, a wide receiver today for Texas as they try and win for the first time in 14 years in Manhattan. Both coming in three and three, critically important because the loser will fall a full three games out of first place in the Big 12. Mitchell Becker is on to kick it off for Texas. And as we've uh, come to learn from watching K-State over the years from Bill Snyder, the Wildcats very good at special teams. Dominique Keith and Byron Pringle both have returns for touchdowns. Pringle's a 99-yard kick return against Texas Tech. And it is headed towards Pringle from his own one-yard line. Finds the seam out across the 30 and wrapped up around the ankles around the 32-yard line. That's his return, Antoine Davis on the tackle. Jesse Ertz is the Cats quarterback. He's also their second leading rusher, but hitting on less than 50% of his throws, Anthony. He's extremely dangerous with his legs. That's a huge component of this offense, but he's an inconsistent passer. Doesn't have the starts under his belt, yet he's improving in that area. They're going to need him to have some connections today with some of his wide receivers to be successful. Suffered a shoulder injury in his throwing arm last week against Oklahoma. Not out of the realm of possibility. We could see two or possibly Possibly three quarterbacks today for the Cats. The give is to their three-year starter, Charles Jones, and we've got a flag down as Jones was shoved out of bounds. Senior out of Mandeville, Louisiana. You're going to get a hold on the outside. Good penetration early by this Texas defense, much maligned defense early on this season. This is one of the challenges for K-State. An inexperienced O-line. Offense, number 71, 10-yard penalty, replay first down. The least experience that Coach Snyder has had in 26 years. And uh, K-State, how about our impact players today? And Charles Jones, the tailback's going to get a lot of work. He's a very experienced back. Heath is the guy on the outside that's going to get the work. Nelson inside for Texas is going to be the disruptor. And watch number 45, Wheeler. He's their top tackler. He has to have a big game against Kansas State. Oops. Looking downfield, and it's snagged by Deontay Burton, the senior from right here in Manhattan. They had a free play on that one. Looked to be offsides on Texas. And the Wildcats will take a 31-yard game. Defense, number 90. That penalty and result down. Deontay Burton, number six. He's six foot two. He's the guy they're going to try to take shots from. That's something you don't see early on from this Kansas State offense. Taking a little book out of Texas early on. They have jumped again. There is another flag and another free play downfield. They run the same thing to Burton. This time he's out of bounds. But they uh, will be able to take the yardage here. Charles Omenahu, the sophomore for Rowlett, Texas. Offside, defense, number 90. In the neutral zone is the snap. Five yard penalty, first down. And Charlie Strong replaced him after that. Uh, jumping off sides. Beth, a tremendous amount of sophomores and young players on this defense. And one of the things has been inconsistency. And right there, not having discipline at the snap count. This is the third game now for Charlie Strong uh, since he demoted Vance Bedford and took over the play calling on the defensive side. They've really simplified things and tried to help the younger guys feel more comfortable. Gonna run it with Jones, gets it down inside the 40-yard line. What have you got for us, Rocky? Yeah, Beth, a lot of youth and a lot of inexperience in the back end for Texas. We saw early on there, Ursh going after the sophomore, Chris Boyd, 
on the outside there. Look for them to attack. This is a secondary much maligned this year. Got to get it done here for Texas. Trips to the left here for Jesse Ertz on first down. It's kept out into the flat, and the catch is made by Isaiah Zuber. The 11th catch of the year for the redshirt freshman out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. Well, we're not seeing any issues with Jesse Ertz throwing the ball, coming out with his bum right shoulder. Remember, he's got an AC joint issue. He's coming out, showing toughness. Ball gets tipped up in the air. Great con con concentration by Zuber there to make that catch. Jones, the offset back. Abdul Beecham again, so both uh, lines. Offense, number 61, five-yard penalty, still second down. Having some early issues. Yeah, one thing you normally see from a Kansas State team is they're always clean, well-disciplined. That's something that Bill Snyder coaches for these uh, players to be. And right there, you have a Juco player's first, uh, first year here at Kansas State, still trying to buy into that process. Pringle is the lone setback to the near side. Dominique Heath, their leading uh, receiver, slotted right. They're going to run it with Jones. He's got some space down inside the 25-yard line and a first down for the Wildcats with a gain of 10. I was talking to the offensive line coach, Charlie Dickey, and he said, man, this, this offensive line has come together week to week. They've got four new starters. They've moved number 71, those four, returning starter from last year, from center to right tackle, Reisner. And right now, you can see the mesh getting some nice holes up front against this Texas defense. They'll keep it on the ground with Jones churning those legs down inside the 20-yard line to the 18. Stopped by Puna Ford. And so here we go with the Wildcats in the red zone, the most successful team in college football over the course of the last year and a half. They have scored on their last 53 trips, including going 28 for 28 so far this year. They add the fullback now, Winston Dimmel, the up man in the eye, the son of the offensive coordinator, Dana Dimmel. He sets a nice lead block, Jones to the 15. Guys, I love what Kansas State's doing right now offensively. Texas's defense is very fast. You don't try to outrun fast. You run right at it, try to neutralize that speed. Certainly much more of a north-south dynamic here for Kansas State, really doing well. Yeah, it's all about long drives. They want to get 10 to 15 play drives, slow the game down, control the pace. Right now, the tempo's in their favor. Ball down on the deck. More movement on both sides, it looked like pre-snap. Flags are down. Brecken Hager was the uh, Longhorn that jumped on the edge. Offside, offense, defense, number 44. Five-yard penalty, yardage results in a first down. Longhorns wanted a fast start, Anthony, but too fast. Yeah, Three offsides. Yep, third penalty right now. And another sophomore, number 44. You got to hold your water on the outside. To me, his eyes aren't on the football. They're looking inside at the running back. That's the reason he jumped offsides. Trips left. First and goal from the 10. They like to hit that corner route on the inside receiver. They're going to run Jones. Breaks a tackle. Makes his way down to the six. Charles Jones got great patience. The one thing that he understands in this zone system is he finds the hole, waits for it to come open, and he explodes through it. Early on so far, Beth, he's had some nice carries and really setting the, the pace of this offense. Had one of uh, his best career games last year against Texas. 18 carries for 122 yards. Already five rushes for 28 here on their initial possession. Against the four-man front. Incomplete, overthrowing Zuber, and another flag on the carpet. 
And that's the corner route I was just talking about. Three receivers side, man-to-man -man coverage inside. They run two quick slants on the outside and try to hit the corner player. Holy, holy. Defense, number two. Half the distance to the goal, automatic, first down. And guys, clearly right now, they're going after Chris Boyd, the cornerback. Saw early on in the drive there, and then on that play, they're inside his head right now. Look for them to keep attacking the young sophomore. They've made some changes, have had several different guys playing at corner and at safety throughout the course of this season. Dimmel in the Wildcat. The direct snap to the fullback, and the Longhorns were ready for it. Wrapped up by Malik Jefferson, the middle backer. A little unorthodox to see a team use a fullback in the Wildcat position. Texas defense is on top of it there, not being fooled. It's almost 100% run when he gets the ball, and the speed of the linebackers on the outside, number 46, Malik Jefferson, on point, ready for that play. Back in the game comes Ertz. As does Charles Jones at tailback. The horns almost jumped again. Option left, Ertz will keep, and Jesse Ertz will score for Kansas State on a six-yard run. A tactical opening drive aided by a slew of Texas penalties. Matthew McCrane, the junior out of Brownwood, Texas, on for the PAT. Nine plays, 68 yards in five and a half minutes. Best thing about the quarterback selling the option, gets the linebacker to jump outside. Jesse Ertz gets his touchdown for his football team. High above Bill Snyder Family Stadium here in Manhattan, Kansas. K-State marching down the field on their first possession. They take the 7-0 lead over Texas. Beth Mowens along with Anthony Beck. Does the Longhorns come in here, Anthony, with that 500 record and big problems on the defensive side, forcing Charlie Strong to take over, and they give up the early score here. Yeah, it's been a collection of missed tackles, undisciplined play. We've seen the jumping off sides in the first drive, miscommunications on the back end. They're coming off their best game against Iowa State defensively. I think the biggest thing is they have a bunch of sophomores, young players on the field right now, and it's baptism by fire, and that's tough when you're going against the Big 12 offenses throughout the league. That number you just saw, by the way, 34 points per game allowed. That would be a single season high for a Texas defense. And Andy Foreman does not get out to the 10 yard line. Let's check into the studio with Chris Cotter. Okay, Beth, Heisman Trophy front runner right now. Lamar Jackson opening things up here for Louisville over on ABC. Taking on NC State, breaks the tackle and goes 36 yards for the score. Cardinals up. 7 to nothing early. Meanwhile, over in the Big Ten, Clayton Thorson is going to fire this one over the top to Solomon Vault. This gives Northwestern the early lead over Indiana. Beth? During the, during the return, holding, return team number four. Half the distance of the goal, first down. Thank you, Chris. So off of the uh, short return and now a penalty, the sixth flag of the game. Let's welcome in Freshman Shane Bouchelle. He's got big play potential at quarterback. Nine touchdown passes of over 25 yards to six different guys. Well, let's think of a quote of Little John. Shot, shot, shots. That's what he's going to try to do 10 to 12 times. Get the ball down the field. He must be consistent versus Kansas State. Pressure packages on third down. Bouchelle will hand it off to Deontay Foreman for the short game. Rocky. Anthony, what's going to allow Shane Bouchel to try those shot, shot, shots down the field is his running back, Deontay Foreman. Charlie Strong said this week he's our best football player. Not our best running back, not our best offensive player, but our best total football player. And, guys, you can see down here on the field, 249 pounds. His legs are big around his tree trunks. It's hard to get this guy to the ground. 
Dating back to last season, seven straight games with over 100 yards rushing, and there he is, out to the 20-yard line. He is working with a couple of different linemen up front, Jake McMillan and Tristan Nicholson, who each do have a start today at center and right tackle as they show that up-tempo, spread set. Dorian Leonard dropped it out in the flat, and a little pushing and shoving going on. You're right, it's all about speed and tempo. They want to get up to the line of scrimmage. The one thing is, though, if the defense can stop them, they can get their defense back on the field a lot quicker. That's put a lot of pressure on Charlie Strong and his defensive side. And the first year OC Sterling Gilbert coming over from Tulsa and cranking up the offense. Foreman, another first down run out to the 35 yard line and a gain of 15. Between the tackles, that's where they want to go. They got the center and the guard with the great combination. 76 Perkins with the pancake block making the holes. We shall play action, now looking for room to run. Gets another nice block and will run out of bounds at the 40-yard line. You see so many teams across this country running this up-tempo spread, but to me, the difference, what separates Texas is their run game. Most teams don't have that. They can't run the ball when they have to. Texas can. That makes this offense so dangerous. Leonard. Able to turn it inside across midfield. That'll move the chains again. That's their third double-digit play so far. He's got a clock in the upper right-hand corner there to show you the time between snaps. They average 20. That one was even faster at 12 seconds. Good blocking out on the perimeter and another nice gain of about seven. Jake Oliver clearing the way for Monty Foreman, so both Foreman brothers involved early. A lot of receivers see a little confusion with receivers right now getting lined up. They stick it in the belly of Foreman. Another gash run right up the middle and down to the 30. 13 more yards for Deontay Foreman. Yeah, great block by the left guard. Uh, Bahaye, and he's done a nice job making these holes inside the tackles right now. They're running hard. They give it to him again. Tripped up in the backfield. That was Dante Barnett, one of their top guys on the defensive side up from the secondary. Good run support. And we just heard Chris Cotter in the studio talking about Lamar Jackson. He's the third leading rusher in the country. Foreman is second best. And Donnell Pumphrey at San Diego State, the leading rusher in the nation coming into the weekend. Now it's Kyle Porter in the backfield. They'll get the ball, and he is met right at the line of scrimmage by Tanner Wood. And they'll make some substitutions when Texas substitutes. Other than that, they're relying on the leadership and experience of their three linebackers to get them set. Third and nine. Pressure coming, they wrap up Bouchelle, and down he goes. They brought inside pressure. Kyle Ball's gonna come inside. Watch number 44. Just slips inside. The left, the right tackle, excuse me, who's making his start today for Brandon Hodges, having some issues up front in protection. And that's the pressure we're talking about to get to Shane Bouchelle and, make, and disrupt his game. The drive stalls with the nine-yard loss. Michael Dixon, one of the top punters in college football, will spin that one down inside the five. And then, is that Duvernay that lost his footing? He appeared to be in terrific position. No, that was the other number two, Chris Boyd. A 39-yard punt. K-State will have it when we come back. ESPN College Football, brought to you by the all-new Honda Ridgeline for truck tough things and everyday things. And Goodyear, hardworking tires that deliver blimp-worthy performance. A great scene here on homecoming weekend in Manhattan, Kansas. A rivalry that dates back. Their first meeting was back in 1913 and then really started to pick up once they were together in the Big 12. Texas won that first one way back when, but the Wildcats have won six of the last eight meetings. And it's been a while, 14 years since Texas came in here under Mac Brown and got a W. Had a late field goal and then a late blocked field goal. 
to get the win. Texas ran 11 plays in just over three minutes, but were forced to punt it away. And now the second possession for K-State. A six-yard touchdown run from Jesse Ertz the first time they had it. And a handoff to Dalvin Warmack, the sophomore out of Blue Springs, Missouri. It was Paul Boyette on the stop, a loss of two. Yeah, and that's that pressure off the outside. Malcolm Roach, number 32. That's what they're going to do, mix it up. They're going to have some run pressures on the outside. They run that outside zone read option to slow this run game down at Kansas State. Run after a nice block in the backfield to buy his quarterback a little more time. They're going to say that was a catch by Pringle. Let's check in with Chris. All right, y'all, Clayton Thorson is really starting to heat up for Northwestern. He finds his favorite target, Austin Carr, over the middle. Indiana not quite ready to play defense today. 14 to nothing early, Northwestern on top. Thank you, Chris. That's Dalvin Warmack in, uh, on his first series of the day. And now over to the sideline, Charles Jones is back in there at tailback. Ertz to Burton, the catch is made just shy of the 30. Forward progress will put him close to that first down marker. And you see the process of the Kansas State offense right now. They get set quickly on the line of scrimmage. They're checking to see if it's close to the first down or not, and they're, they're going to move the sticks. They're going to get their alignment. They're going to overlook the defense, and their coaches are going to basically give them a single signal on the sidelines. Give them the look, the protection, the play. And they'll take that clock, Beth, all the way down. The ruling on the field is a first down. That plays under further review. We're going to go ahead and review that spot. As it stands, it's a, a solid start for Kansas State. Uh, statistically, the worst offensive crew in the Big 12, but they got the early 7-0 lead. And the play that they're taking a closer look at. A review of that last play, which was ruled to be a Kansas State first down. That receiver catches the ball, and once he has control of it, hitting down to the ground, he's on the 29 and a half yard line right about there. That's where they position the football. Right now, Kansas State is going to line up their offense. Now, remember, a few jump offside penalties, maybe a couple hard counts here to try to draw Texas offsides. Only need a half a yard. Got a big back in the backfield in Alex Barnes, 220 pounds. Fourth and inches. Already a couple of offside penalties and one that was not taken by K-State. And they will snap it and go for it. The keeper for Jesse Ertz. And the initial spot has him out across the 30, which would be good enough for a first down. And he had a couple fans booing, thinking that maybe Coach Snyder would not run the ball there. And he's uh, definitely getting out of that conservative world and, and presses it forward. I like the play call, only a half a yard. They're able to get the quarterback to get inside the big blocks of their linemen. They call that a wedge play. All the linemen come down in a wedge, and the quarterback just funnels through. You only need a half a yard there. Nice call. Alex Barnes will stay in the backfield alongside Ertz. Three down linemen here for Texas. We've seen a couple of different fronts so far. Ertz with time, and it's dropped out across the 40, intended for Byron Pringle. And an update uh, on one of their backup running backs, Dalvin Warmack. That's the sophomore heading back to the locker room. Great protection right there for Kansas State. Ertz is, puts a nice ball out there. Pringle's got to catch that. Now, what I did see was with the great protection, there were some huge run lanes. Ertz has been a guy that can run the ball effectively. Look for that moving forward when they see some of these films on the sideline. Jesse is four of five for 49 yards. Go, go! Dimmel back into the game, and he's the motion man. They'll throw to Zuber, the catch and the lunge out to the 33. Let's check in with Chris. All right, Beth, let's go to the Big 12. Kansas and Oklahoma State 
Jayhawks wearing those throwback dark blue uniforms. Montel Cozart finding a Cuviante Gonzalez, 68 yards in Kansas on top early. Well, Oklahoma State has won six of the last seven on the road, but the Jayhawks out to the quick start. Oklahoma State has West Virginia next week. Of course, the Mountaineers, that big showdown with TCU coming up in the 3.30 window. Ertz breaking a tackle. He's got the first down and stumbling out to the 45. That's a nice job by Ertz here. Again, pressure coming on the outside and the inside. They do a twist. It leaves an alley up the middle. The one thing Zach Ertz, uh, excuse me, Jesse Ertz told us was that he's not a sliding quarterback. Today, he's got to do that with his right shoulder injury. See, so he was kind of caught in between there, looking a little Looks to still be a work in progress yes, for, he's, he's for working. Jesse. It's coming. That was Malik Jefferson who initially had a crack at him in the backfield. Jesse uh, showing us why he's their second leading rusher this year. Alex Burns, he may get some more work today with the injury to Womack. He's out to the 48-yard line, a gain of five. Good ball control, good clock management here in the first quarter for K-State. Yeah, you see that play clock, it just gets down to six five seconds and that's when they're snapping the ball again it's a good defense to keep this high-powered offense of texas off the field we go with a couple of tight ends here both valentine and gammon in the game play clock down to three Ertz with the design to run lost a yard rocky yeah, Beth, you just mentioned the fact that slow, methodic tempo of Kansas State. Texas offense, very dynamic, very explosive. The best defense against that is to keep them on the sideline. The sideline in the history of football has never given up a big play, has never given up yards. Keep that explosive offense on the sideline. This game plan working out well right now Rocky, for Kansas State. So, Rocky, talk to me about the linebackers, the defensive players waiting every one of these snaps. Does that kind of mess with their timing a little bit? Well, yeah. I mean, as you're trying to figure out where your gap is and you're moving in and out, you're now all of a sudden you're, you're thinking too much and they're checking the play in and out versus just getting to the line and running it. Ertz to Burton, to the 45. Hustling for a couple more yards, nine yards on the pickup and another first down. You know, one thing too, I'd say the get off of the defenders, trying to get off on the snap count or trying to get off on the, on the snap, you really don't have any timing. You know they're trying to whittle that clock down and it takes away kind of your adrenaline. You're coming into this game, you're all fired up. Heck, half of the defense was jumping off sides early. Now they're kind of slowing them down. Got to keep that momentum going and stay enthused throughout this football game. Defense has already been on the field for over 10 minutes for Texas. This is the 11th play of this drive. Ertz to Dimmo coming out of the backfield, making a couple of guys miss. And reaches down to the 30-yard line. Winston Dimmel. Who says a fullback can't make moves on the outside and make a guy miss? Winston Dimmel showing us a little athleticism there. Just a little check down, Beth, again, moving the chains, the sticks, make a couple guys miss, which Texas has shown in the past on defense. And again, another first down, another opportunity to run this clock down. Ertz will keep again, can't get to the edge this time. Taken down at the 31 yard line. That was Malcolm Roach that came in and got a hit on him after Omenahu slowed him down. They're winning on first down is obviously important. Anytime you can get no gain on a first down, that's a big play for your defense. You got to keep them out of field goal range, number one, and you still got to be attacking as this first quarter, Beth, has run out. Good job by K-State to control that clock as the first quarter comes to a close. They score on their first possession. They are driving again as they try and continue their dominance over Texas at home. a proud partner of the college football playoff. Be on the lookout for Taco Bell student sections and passionate fans like these 
at games all season long. You know, K-State, they have been celebrating wins over Texas on a regular basis, six and one all time. That only loss coming back in 2002. They've had the ball for 11 and a half minutes and have run 21 plays through the course of the first quarter as we move into the second. And the second time they have had the ball, trying to get back into the end zone. Nice catch made by Dominique Keith, their top target. And it'll depend on the spot as to whether he's uh, picked up another first down just outside the 20. You know, one thing Charlie Strong has been talking about all week about this Kansas State team is the fan base and the, and the crowd and the advantage that they have. They packed 51,000 plus in here very tightly. They're very loud. The one thing Coach Snyder said he did was he changed the student section from behind the goalpost and put them over in the 30 yard line. Gave him some better seats. I don't know if he's footing the bill on that, but he got them some better angles to watch and cheer for a team. Right behind the opponent's bench, we might add, on the far side of the field. This is Charles Jones. Lineman in front of him lost a helmet as Jones burrows his way down inside the 20. And Beth, you just talked about that crowd, but right now deathly quiet while Ertz and this offense works so the communication can happen between himself, the offensive line, and the wide receivers. But I'm sure it'll get back up to tempo once Texas gets that ball back. Reminds me of the Colts, Rocky, Peyton Manning, everybody <laughs> quiets down in the stands on the outside. He, he remember Peyton Manning would always go to the crowd and say, calm down, calm down. And literally, you could see the people in the stands go, shh, Peyton said to quiet down. <laughs> so they are back in the red zone once again. They are uh, 29 for 29 this uh, year, 54 consecutive trips that they have put points on the board, including Jesse Ertz with the six yard touchdown run in the first quarter. Jones again, and he's wrapped up at the 19-yard line. Kuna Ford, one of the first guys there. That's a nice job. Also, number 97, Chris Nelson's there. This team's very good for tackles for a loss. Uh, they definitely disrupt you at the line of scrimmage, one of the tops in college football of making those plays behind the line of scrimmage. It's, it's more on the back end and the tackles, once they get through the line of scrimmage, Beth, that's been the problem for this Texas defense. Yeah, they're also fourth in the country in sacks, so... Disruptive up front has not been the issue throughout the three and three record thus far. Reaching up to show pressure, uh, pressure from the secondary. Ertz is chased out of there. Terrific cut at the 12, and he's got his second touchdown of the half. Kid's got some subtle elusiveness to his run game. Watch as he just finds the hole nice and easy. He's very patient. And he just jukes number 24, John Bonney, the cornerback, out of his shoes on that one. Basically, Beth, untouched to the end zone. Two long drives, two scores for K-State. That one goes 16 plays, seven and a half minutes. And Matthew McCrane's extra point is good. It's as nimble as you can be at the quarterback position. Watch him breaking ankles on the outside, a little stiff arm to finish the deal in the end zone. Let's take a look at today's performance spotlight brought to you by Dickies. Ertz in the pocket has been nice. He's been able to fake them out. That was an option play. Gets his first touchdown today. And here, in the pocket, just kind of wiggles and moves. And watch the guy right here. He's going to juke this corner. Bonnie on the outside. Just nowhere to be found. Basically untouched. And right now, he's been the, the guy on offense that's made the difference with his legs. Look at the time of possession. They have kept Texas off the field. All 11 of those plays in one drive that sputtered in that first quarter so two long scoring drives capped off by jesse Ertz's touchdown runs this will be a monty foreman from inside the 10 and out to the 25. we've got more from chris cotter beth louisville right back at it it's lamar jackson 
This is the longest play from scrimmage this year for Louisville, and he finds Jalen Smith with that laser, and Smith outruns the secondary. 17 to nothing, Louisville on top, still in the first over on ABC. Thank you, Chris. Uh, the Lamar Jackson freight train keeps rolling. What he come into the day? 15 rushing touchdowns, 15 passing touchdowns. And that was an NC State team that beat Notre Dame and almost beat Clemson. Took them to overtime last week. Such a critical drive right now for Texas. They have to get down and get into the scoring zone here. Can't have any three or six and outs. Offense has got to be on point. Not a lot of chances. Got to execute. Another give to the second leading rusher in the country, Deontay Foreman. Rocky. Guys, watch every Kansas State defensive player will look to the sideline to get the call versus one guy getting it and translate it. Cuts down one line of communication in an attempt to stay up with this high tempo. Foreman met in the backfield, and it's Jordan Willis, the Big 12 sack leader, and also the leader in tackles for loss. He gets another one right there. Yeah, they're going to bring a blitz on the outside with Moore and the pressure combination. On the top with Jordan Willis, and nobody picks these guys up, Beth, and that's a huge stop. Three and out is not good, especially what Kansas State is doing on offense right now. Ethan Pringle are the deep end, uh, number four in purple, a 75-yard punt return touchdown against Florida Atlantic this year. He's already been twice named the Big 12 Special Teamer of the Week. And this punt will... Stay away from Dominique, out of bounds. Around the 29-yard line, the offense and Bouchelle were out there for just 52 seconds. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. We help you live life differently. And the new 2016 Lexus ES and ES Hybrid. It's the next level Lux. The sights and sounds of this homecoming weekend here in Manhattan, Kansas. And everywhere you go, you see the references to family. And that's what Bill Snyder has created here in his 25 years. Coaching today in his 302nd game. He's a Hall of Famer. And he is presently the only coach. This is the only program since the uh, start of the Big 12 that has a winning record against Texas. They're 8-4. and four including uh, some dominating performances at home against the Horns. Ertz looking to air it out, and that'll wobble well short of its intended target. He builds it on high character. He's disciplined with his players. His players respect him. He still motivates these guys and development of young men. That's what he does. He developed them on and off the field, and it's, it's a credit to him. He's not getting the four- and five-star players, even the three-star players, Bet. He is getting talent in here, talent that he wants to be around, and talent that these players can build and develop, and you see them on the field. They're all contributing in this football game. Four wins away from 200 for his career, 17 times. Uh, going to bowl games under Coach Snyder. That pass intended for Burton, and complete. John Bonney had the coverage, and now it's third down. You know, Beth, interesting first two plays. You've really methodically ran the ball, yep. moved the ball down the field. Now you come out, you got two incompletions, you stop the clock, you got a two touchdown lead. Now you potentially can give Texas the ball back to get back on offense, see if they can convert. Ertz again coming in today, hitting on just 49% of his passes. And he is going down back inside the 15 yard line, Brecken Hager. The sophomore from Austin moved from the middle to the outside this year so they could utilize that speed and a loss of 12. He's done a nice job early on. He's on the outside going against the left tackle, number 74, France. And he's going to beat him with an underneath and come outside, gets him off balance, and he's right there to make the play. You talked about the sacks, the tackles for loss, and that was a dire needed stop on third and long. Nick Walsh will have to punt from inside his five. It's going to bounce, and Texas is going to have it around midfield, just a 34-yard punt. Short field for Shane Bouchelle, but so far it's been Bill Snyder walking the walk against the Longhorns. 
14 nothing Kansas State but look everyone knows it's all about the shoes right especially for head coach Bill Snyder even the statue here at Kansas State has a pair of Bill Snyder's absolute favorite shoes Nike Cortez's but here's the thing guys Nike hasn't made these shoes since the mid 1980s they had to call a surf shop out in California said they had about eight ten pairs they immediately sent them here to Kansas State coach likes them stretched out a certain way he's been wearing them for over two decades here at Kansas State <laughs> that is fantastic Rocky it's that kind of attention to detail over the years for coach Snyder and the comfort level that he has achieved on those 25 years on the sideline and how about the statue they pop this collar up i mean the trending look between that and the cortez the nike swoosh you gotta love it i guess they're down in with nike for a pretty long time i'd say nice as an active coach to have that uh, statue out front deontay foreman offset with bouchelle and second down and foreman will get the call Going to be about a yard shy of the first down marker. By the way, Lee Corso, who was picking this game uh, on college game day, said, I'm going to go with my fellow AARP member. He actually picked K-State to win this one. Going with Coach Snyder. <laughs> the rest of the crew went Texas. Well, they got to find ways to convert third downs. You remember the pressure early, number 52. He's up in close to the box right now. Pass batted down. Good rush from Jordan Willis, who's been active and disruptive here in the first half. Jordan Willis is 6'5, 270 pounds. He is a specimen. Talk to the coaches about him. He is a exciting player off the edge. It looks like they're going to go for it. Number 18 for Texas, the 18 wheeler package, Tyrone Swoots. Pretty much 100% run here, Beth. 6'4, 250, the fifth year senior. And movement pre-snap. You can't have it. You got new players on the edge, number 72. Rodriguez coming off the bench, not ready for the tempo. Multiple players move. Only fourth down. That is the fifth penalty accepted against Texas so far in the first half. Uh, those moments are crucial in the game, Beth. Fourth and one, you've got to be dialed in, locked in. The crowd isn't that loud. You've got to be able to hold your water and get that first down. Jumping off sides forces you to punt. On comes Michael Dixon, the sophomore from Sydney, Australia. Pringle with the fair catch around the nine yard line. That's a 40 yard boot. K-State offense back out on the field with a two touchdown lead. Tonight on ESPN, it's an SEC top 25 doubleheader coming your way. First at six Eastern, it's Arkansas, Auburn. Then at nine o'clock, LSU at home down in Death Valley to take on Ole Miss. Both those games also streaming live on your ESPN app. And uh, the story out of Baton Rouge is that Leonard Fournette is back and ready to go tonight, returning from an ankle injury. You know, um, it's interesting, Beth. You know, Leonard Fournette is a guy who's coming off a high ankle sprain. I'll be quite honest with you. I'd be more leaning towards maybe shutting him down for the season. As a player, he wants to get back on the field. I get that. But as a staff and the coaches and the trainers, I think you got to lean on the high side of being safe and making sure that he doesn't re-injure. He's got a big-time career ahead of him. I think we're all in agreement that he'll probably leave this year, too. I'm, I'm not necessarily in agreement, though, Anthony, about him not playing. If he's healthy, I think he should play football. If you're a football player, play football. If you're a broadcaster, broadcast games. Do what you're supposed to do at this point in your life. I think if you start thinking about the situations... The illegal block in the back. Offense, number six. From the, from the previous spot, Replay first down. Yeah, I just think if you start thinking in life, trying to wait for the perfect situation, that's just not a, a good way to live your life. If he can play, I think he should play, and I think he wants to play because he's a football player. Yeah, we know he wants to play. I would just say having a high ankle sp uh, sprain in my career, Beth, that, that is a long-term injury. He's been out for quite a bit. Hopefully he's 100%. You trust the coaches and trainers in that situation. If they agree he's 100%, he'll hit the field. But if he's not close or he's not near 100%, I would not risk it. Todd McShay's uh, got him uh, right now listed as a first-round pick, along with Christian McCaffrey and Dalvin Cook could be three running backs 
uh, going in the first round. That's Byron Pringle there with the catch, the sophomore out of Tampa, Florida. Junior college transfer who's made a nice impact at a nine yard gain. He gets some, Excuse me, 14. He gets some space on the outside and you know, again, when you're when you're looking to the sideline to the coaching staff, they're going to read the defense. They're going to give them a call and put them in the best situation for their quarterback, receivers, and running backs and linemen to be in. Right there, taking advantage of off coverage. He's Freeman, the linebacker, creeping up. They'll bring Bonnie off the edge with the corner blitz. It's picked up and a first down. Justin Silman. How about an update on that Wisconsin-Iowa game, Chris? All right, Beth, here's what happened. Martin Houston came in a quarterback for Wisconsin. Hornibrook went out with an injury after a targeting call. Finds Troy from Magali. Forget about it, right? 7-0 Badgers on top over on ESPN. Thank you very much, Chris. Well, that's a big one in the, uh, in the Big Ten West, especially for the Badgers to try and get back into it. They've got that huge showdown against Nebraska as well next week. You want to talk about strength of schedule. They have got it. Close losses to Michigan and Ohio State as Simmons dances his way down the sideline and may have picked up another first down. And it's interesting on that last play, Beth. The fullback kind of inched up a couple inches. That would give me a tip if I'm a linebacker to say, you know what, it might be coming to this side of the field. They're taking advantage. Watch the fullback. He slightly moved up to the right. We didn't get him initially in the stance, but it gets him closer to where he needs to make a block, just enough to get the corner on the outside. And again, another big run to the right side. Someone will stay out there, deep back in the eye behind Dimmel. Gets his head down maybe a couple of yards, Rocky. And this Kansas State offense completely has this Texas defense on its heels. We're seeing all kinds of variety out of this offense. We're seeing inside runs, outside runs, quick game, deep shot screens right now. It looks like this Texas defense does not know where this offense is going to hit them. And this is where you really have to test your, your skill set your experience, and unfortunately for Texas, Beth, they got young players on the field right now. You've got to be gap sound. You've got to be in the right spots. you got to see your keys. And when you're sitting in your stance for a long time waiting for the snap to count to get snapped, sometimes you start getting off your game. Right now, they have to be trusting their eyes with this offense. Well, look that play clock down to 10 that time. Selman taken down after a short game it'll be third down and a chance here for Texas now to get a stop and get that offense back out onto the field they have only had it for six minutes so far in the first half well, listen if, if I'm Texas here I would get in the face of these wide receivers challenge them to get open in a route and bring an extra defender in the rush here and make sure you're lane integrity don't let the quarterback scoot out through an open lane We'll go with four down linemen here on third down. It's looking right now. He's going to run with it. He's got some space. Another nice cutback, and he's got the first down. Out across the 45. Nine yards on the scamper. And again, he's just going to continue to beat with his legs. Just patient. Watch here. Kind of selling the pass a little bit. And soon as the alley walks, opens up to the outside, it's a, it's a free lane for him to run. The defensive end collapses inside, and there's a lot of space. I mean, they can honestly do that all day. If you don't have consistency in your gap and your pressures, and you start moving around and leaving spaces, he's going to get you with his legs. He's run it eight times for 36 yards. He's also thrown it well, nine for 12. We'll get out of bounds again. What did Coach Snyder tell us yesterday? We've got to do well on first down, so these third downs are manageable. Uh, they have been so far in the first half. They're four of six in their conversions. I mean, if you came in with the game plan, this is exactly what they yep. talked about they wanted to do, but it's always tough to execute holding the ball, methodical drives, uh, bringing the cl plate clock down, just really taking Texas completely out of their game plan and definitely off schedule for their offense on the field. Texas defense has been out there for 18 minutes already. Jesse Ertz with a couple of touchdown runs for a 14-0 lead. That pass is 
batted at the line of scrimmage. That was Brecken Hager. Hager's made some nice plays in, in his few opportunities where they were able to make splash. He had a big sack on a third down, obviously swatting that ball there, and it puts him in third and in a, pretty much a long situation. Six yards was the last third down. They were able to convert it. Let's see if they can stay in their lanes and contain the quarterback here and not let Jesse Ertz beat them with his legs. Zuber, Heath, and Pringle, your trips to the top of the screen. Ertz flushed, finding some space. He'll tuck it at about the 44-yard line. It's going to be close to, they say his knee went down at the 45, and that would be short. And Jeremy McClellan, number 23, a true freshman, had a huge opportunity just to break down and make the tackle before he lunges at him. Ertz just waits for that and runs to the outside. They're going to go for this uh, opportunity here on, uh, on fourth down. Having success early. They've already converted once on a fourth down. And now with two on the play clock, Ertz will call the timeout. Kansas out. State takes its first time out of the half. They will have two left, 4.30 to go here in the second quarter in a 14-0 K-State lead. JT Barrett and second ranked Ohio State will face another tough Big Ten opponent on the road. It's the whiteout game at Beaver Stadium with the Penn State Nittany Lions. Tonight at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. 89 career touchdowns, the new school record for JT. Uh, I tell you, he's a special player. Saw him last week against Wisconsin. Just lead the charge. He's completely in control every single snap. And, you know, listen, this team is well in the mix to being one of the top four teams in this college football playoff as we start winding down towards the end of the season. They will be going tonight for their 22nd consecutive win on the road. I'll tell you what, there's few things that JT Barrett can't do. Everyone knows he's a running quarterback, but he also makes the big plays. Mobility, keeping the play alive, allowing those wide receivers to get open. A big time throw there versus Wisconsin. And then later on, we see him get rid of a get rid of a sack, and then throw an absolute missile in between three defenders. So he's not just a run around quarterback doing a great job throwing the ball as well. I think a Rocky Bowman at linebacker would have been able to get that interception there. In of course, that I would have been able to got that one. Come on now. <laughs> not anymore, though. Back to business for Texas, and the quick hitter out of the flat to Jacory Warwick. It's a Texas offense that four times this year has gone for over 500 yards, but so far in the first half, under 80 yards of total offense. Bouchelle off the pump fake. He's got a man deep. Catching it on the run at the 50 is Devin Duvernay. Touchdown Longhorns. 80 yards on the strike. You can't fall asleep on the outside. And the one thing that this defense has not done well is they go for fakes and get beat deep. And that's what happens on this pass play. Watch this. They're going to run a little faked quick screen to the outside. You see number eight for Kansas State really jump it. And we talked about it earlier. Shane Bouchel will kill you with his arm. He drops a dime to number two, Duv uh, Duvernay on that pass, really nice executed play, a much needed explosive play for this offense. Bouchelle's 10th touchdown pass of the season of over 25 yards, and for Devin Duvernay, his third score of at least 60 yards. And a new career high for the true freshman out of Saxe, Texas. 82 yards prior to that play and 80 on this connection. Don't fall asleep on this offense, Beth, because before you know it, they're going to have a ball over your head, and they score very quickly to get themselves back in this game. Bouchelle doing a nice job on his deep throws. That was Duvernay earlier in the year. That's something that he's worked on a lot. 
in the offseason. Another connection with Duvernay. And a true freshman showing his stuff. Byron Pringle will take a knee. Let's check in with Chris Cotter for an update. Okay, Beth, Anthony, here's what we've got coming up on the Dave & Buster's Halftime Report. We've been showing you highlights of Lamar Jackson all day. He's having another big game today against NC State. We'll tell you what's happening there. A lot of big, big 10 games early on in the slate. We've got some highlights of those games. And we'll preview the Alabama A&M game, the big one in the SEC this week. And that's all coming up. Dave & Buster's Halftime Report. Jonathan Vilma, Butch Davis will join me in a few minutes, guys. Thank you very much, Chris. Why don't we tease Chris's tease of Alabama, Texas Sam. The Tide have won 11 straight against top 25 opponents. They're heavy favorites at home against the Aggies. They're the most complete team in college football, special teams, offense, defense, and they have the best coach. And right now they're showing it week in and week out. And especially getting a chance to show it, this Texas defense right now needs to build off that score and get the ball back and stop Kansas State. This is Heath, gets out across the third. He got a nice block out there from Deontay Burton. They really like Heath uh, as far as his ability to make people miss in space. He's a smaller guy. Tyler Lockett kind of uh, body frame, and that's the kind of a playmaker they expect him to be. He's caught some big time balls, 100 yards last week and a catch, so they want to continue that trend looking for him in this offense. He's 5'9", a buck 75, and in that Oklahoma game at a 54 yard touchdown catch, from Joe Hubner. That was their longest offensive play of the season. They're going to try him again to the other side, and he's got the first down, stumbling out across the 40. That time it was Zuber. Yeah, I'll tell you, I'm impressed by the other wide receivers blocking on the outside on these quick. Watch number seven, Zuber, right here, just timing him up and chopping the corner down. That just gives so much more space and room for the wide receiver Heath to work. And they're gonna do that all day if the defense allows them to have it. And Anthony, this is just typical of a Bill Snyder team, right? Fundamentals, wide receivers blocking downfield, allowing those wide receivers to turn a three yard gain into a seven, eight, nine yard gain. That's Bill Snyder stuff all the way. And Rocky, uh, they would love to hold it here for the final three minutes of this first half. And go again to Deontay Burton, the confidence of Jesse Ertz. Sometimes those injuries free your mind a little bit. I got nothing to lose. He's throwing the ball well today. 12 for 16, a buck 17. When you get into the game and the adrenaline's pumping, those those pains kind of go away. When you have a nice game like he's done, uh, you really start building momentum. I think the one thing I'd like to see is Texas's DBs get up in the face of these wide receivers. Force them to get open. Don't give the short space throws that they're allowing Ertz to get. Well, keep it on the deck. Jones bounces to the outside, wrapped up at the 45. First down. Guys, this Texas defense looks afraid to make a mistake right now. They look tentative. Anthony, you mentioned getting up in the face of those wide receivers. I don't know if right now they have the confidence to do that. You know, you're right. That's the one thing. They're young on the outside, but I would say this. I mean, they have plenty of speed. They have the ability to kind of run with these players, and Kansas State has not done well throwing the ball down the field. I'd lean on the high side and count on some pass rushers to maybe put some pressure and maybe get yourself a turnover on a 50-50 ball. Anthony, there's been some opportunities for a DB to jump a ball here, but again, they just look for afraid to go ahead and make a mistake. had the interception right there and is the catch made by the tight end Dayton Valentine it is but we do have a flag went right through the hand what was the phrase that Charlie Strong told us yesterday confident coverage that's what we're looking for ineligible receiver downfield offense number 88 that's a five yard penalty replay first down well you know he had a nice catch, but he wasn't supposed to run a route. I think he was covered up on the outside, so that looks like that was an in, uh, a receiver on the outside covering covering him up, excuse me, on that route, and unfortunately, they don't get that. It's a huge break for Texas, who was in position, like you said, Beth, uh, to make that play. Just again, just doesn't go on their side. Big penalty, though, for the defense. Clock rolling now, under a minute and a half to go. Ertz. Good protection and a nice elevation by Pringle to get up to make the catch close to the first down marker. 
And Pringle on by me and, and just he has all kinds of time to catch this ball. First, the protection is fantastic. And then he goes up and catches a ball way up high. You usually get cut underneath you by a DB. Nobody's home to make the tackle when he catches the ball. Guys, I had a great shot that Byron Pringle just about jumped out of the stadium to make that catch. <laughs> and Ertz will uh, keep it for the first down. The uh, problem, though, for the Wildcats is that Pringle was injured on that play. And over to the sideline he went. Yeah, and they got to be cognizant right now of the play clock. It's a great uh, catch here, getting up high. And the, the tempo right now for this offense has to speed up with the play clock going down. They do have a couple of timeouts left. Ertz looking deep. Sutton juggles incomplete penalty flag on the play and the coverage of John Bonney. Well, right now we're, we're talking a lot of 24 Bonney, and I'll be honest with you, this is tremendous coverage running with the receiver. He just doesn't do Pass the fundamentals. Defense. defense, number 24. That's a 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic, first down. Watch Bonnie, he's in position. Just turn around and find the ball. Don't reach out and grab the receiver. There's nothing to grab. You're right there in position. You're next to him running down the field. When his eyes go up, you look at him, his hands go up, turn your head and get your hands up and knock the ball down. Unfortunately, you go and grab him, they're gonna call the, the flag and uh, it gets uh, Kansas State a huge possession. Back inside the red zone, they're two for two today, 30 for 30 on the season. All day for Jesse Ertz, trying to buy some time and taken down back out at the 23 yard line. Tim Cole tracked him down for the loss and they lost valuable seconds as well. Yeah, you gotta get a timeout there. Kansas State takes his second time out of the half. 30 seconds. Loss of four on the play. Kansas State will have one timeout left. Well, this college football season, you can stream every game live on the ESPN app. Download the app or visit watchespn.com today. Get your phone hooked up, your tablet hooked up, your desktop ready to roll. Another busy day of college football. A couple of big matchups tonight in the SEC. Later this afternoon, Alabama and Texas A&M, and then uh, got the whiteout tonight as well. Gotta Ohio watch, State, Penn State. Got to watch multiple games, Beth. That, that's the trend right now. And I'll tell you, I got to give credit to number 30, Timothy Cole there, making that tackle. That is not a fun position to be in as a linebacker. A lot of green grass, and you're one-on-one -on -one with Ertz, and he's really dismantled you on defense. One-on-one -on -one tackling, it's been an issue, not on that play. Pringle is back into the game now, down at the bottom of your screen, alongside Dominique Heath. Three-man front for Texas. Bringing pressure up the middle, it's picked up. Ertz will dump it off to Jones out of the backfield, and he scoots out of bounds. And we've got a flag in the backfield. Is this going to be a late hit on the quarterback? Yeah, they're going to tag this one on. That's a heck of a job by Charles Jones, under, understanding the situation and getting out of bounds, and a crucial mistake here on the defense. Personal foul, the passer. That's number 91. The run, first down. How about the seventh accepted penalty of the half against Texas? Now, a lot of young players on this defense, but not Cottrell. He's a senior. He should know better here. Obviously hitting him after the throw. Ball comes out of the quarterback's hands. Just stay away from him. No need to hit him there. And they get flagged for it. Puts him in a close situation on the goal line. 16 seconds with one timeout before the half. Ertz to the end zone, touchdown! Byron Pringle! And an eight yard score with nine seconds to go. And they're gonna pick on Bonnie again, number 24. He's gonna run a slam route on the inside of him, gonna shake him, nice route. Bonnie's got no answer. Pringle's showing his quickness and burst at the top of his route, catching the ball and great patience and protection. Ertz sticks it in there for a touchdown. 
Another impressive K-State uh, drive, nine plays, 75 yards, uh, a shade shy of four minutes, and they respond. It's been all Kansas State in this game, running, passing, making the big plays, exposing this Texas defense. Two rushing touchdowns and a passing touchdown for Jesse Ertz here in the first half, 21-7, Kansas State. Nine seconds to go before the break. They have run 46 plays to just 19 for the Longhorns. And the time of possession is close to 24 minutes as opposed to just over six for Texas. It's really been a perfectly played first half by Kansas State. Offense, defense, special teams. And Kansas right now, Kansas State's done a nice job of just controlling every vital part of this football game. Kick to one of the up guys, and Texas will bring it out across the 30. That's Caleb Blewett, the tight end. And you've got four seconds to go in the first half. Texas did win the toss. They deferred. So they will get it coming out of the locker room. But some work to do and some defense to shore up. Yeah, not being able to get the tempo, little off schedule. Last series, big play down the field, explosive play. Looks like they're gonna take it in and kinda try to get the defense back on track and get some more opportunities on offense. Deontay Foreman, 10 carries, 58 yards in that first half. The 80-yard touchdown pass. Bouchel to Duvernay, the scoring for Texas. Now let's get you back to Chris Cotter, Butch Davis, and Jonathan Vilma in the studio for the Dave and Busters. Uh, and Jesse Ertz has just really been a very dangerous runner. We talked about his skill set early on. And really, Texas has had no answer, and he's come up big in the passing game. The inconsistencies have been the big passing issues with Ertz, and he's done a nice job. And tackling has really continued to be a problem for this Texas defense. You've got to get better run fits. You've got to get yourself in a position to run through the, def the, the offensive player and not leap and jump and try to reach for him. And unfortunately, the problems can continue to be those for Texas. Ertz total yards more than the entire Texas team in the first half. They had it for just 622, the third lowest time of possession in a first half for any FBS team this season. And you talk about efficient. How about three scores on five possessions for Kansas State? Both these teams coming in at three and three. The loser of this one will fall a full three games out of first place in the Big 12. Here's Rocky with Coach Strong. Coach, your offense is very explosive, but weren't able to get on the field in the first half. How does that change here in the second half? Well, we had to get off the field on third down on defense and give our offense a chance because if we get on the field, we can be explosive and we can score. Good deal. Thanks, Coach. Explosive indeed. We saw that on the Shane Bouchel 80-yard touchdown pass to Devin DuVernay. And Bouchel will be back out there. The true freshman starting since day one. That huge win over Notre Dame. And things were looking up for the Texas faithful. And after a 2-0 start, they dropped three straight, forcing Charlie Strong to take over the play calling duties for the defense. And let's see if they can get Deontay Foreman rolling again here early in the third. Well, he's the guy it starts with. Uh, listen, 21-7, that's a big deficit, but they have an explosive offense to come back. They got to do it early on in this second half. Go back to Foreman again, coming in as the second leading rusher in the country. Seven straight games with at least 100 yards. Earl Campbell, by the way, has the record of Texas with uh, 11 in a row. Some of the things we've seen Jesse Ertz do with his legs, Shane Bouchel can also do that with his legs, and we need to be cognizant of that moving in this game because he's got some movability parts to his offensive repertoire to help his team move the ball. 0 for 3 today on third down. Bouchel bounces off of one of his linemen, and he's going to come up a yard short. Yeah, he just loses balance, and he sees upset with himself. Just trips up before the line there. Defenders were conversion, kind of kept his balance pretty good out of the spinning out of the pass rush here. Again, he's got to kind of fend around some defenders. And right here, he just gets kind of caught up in the turf. Sometimes that cleat gets twisted in there. 
He trips up, and unfortunately for them, comes up short for the first down. Dixon to punt from his own 20. Ethan Pringle, can they make a play on the special teams as well? K-State over the years, one of the best. Keith, taken down at the 34-yard line. A nice tackle there after the 12-yard return by Oliver. K-State with the football on the other side. Tonight on ESPN, it's an SEC Top 25 doubleheader for you. It's the Hogs and the Tigers down at Auburn, and then LSU Ole Miss from Death Valley, also streaming live on your ESPN app. As the uh, K-State offense heads back out there with Jesse Ertz at the helm, number 46, Malik Jefferson, is back in the middle of that defense, the sophomore out of Mesquite. Haven't had a chance to call his name very much today. Charles Jones, short game, Rocky. Beth, you mentioned Malik Jefferson. The last couple of series of the first half there, didn't see him in the game, not sure of the situation. Jefferson, one of the top recruited linebackers in the entire state of Texas, is back in there right now, but he's been much maligned this year. I think a lot of the fan base and certainly the coaching staff expecting a little bit, no, a little bit more out of number 46. And, and again, you know, the Big 12, when you're playing against these high-powered offenses, you have a lot to worry about in the pass game, the run game. So I'm sure his head's spinning as a youngster, but you got to go out there and play fast and utilize your talents, and that's something Jefferson has to learn to do when he's on the field. Drops it off underneath to Charles Jones. So what do you guys think is at the heart of the matter? I mean, Rocky, you've been through this before. You, you essentially change your coordinators mid-season. And we've talked about how much talent they've got. There's no question about that. Yeah, and one thing I've seen, Beth, is Strong's done a good job of simplifying this scheme. They're only playing a couple of coverages right now, so I don't think that's the issue. To me, it, it's confidence. They're out there thinking they're, they're second-guessing their skills instead of letting their athletic ability take over out there. And I still think that the amount of time in between plays, they're waiting for something to happen. I just feel like they lose a little focus there, and it gets them out of their run fits, but they have to be a better tackling team if they're going to win this game. Ertz will keep it and Winston Dimmel got a nice block on Malik Jefferson and that gave Ertz the step to the edge and a first down. No one ever talks about the fullback, right? He does a lot of good things. He makes the key blocks. He he understands what his deal is, a, a part of the offense. He caught a ball earlier today, made some people miss. I've been impressed by his play and there's a reason why he's on the field because he contributes without needing any type of appreciation from people like us up in the stands. But I'm going to give it to him. He'll get praise from the offensive coordinator, and then he can say, hey, thanks, Dad. Exactly. Pops Dana is the OC. Heath, they've done a nice job of getting him touches in space. And Rocky, there's that cushion. You know, they're just kind of getting it out to the wide receiver that's got the biggest space in between the DB and making, uh, you know, five, six, seven-yard gains. Yeah, and here's the thing. We keep talking about, okay, they're young and, you know, they're making mistakes out there. But, I mean, this season is almost halfway over, guys. It's, I mean, they're almost, these sophomores are almost juniors, really. So at some point, there needs to be a, a little less excuses for, oh, they're a little bit uh, inexperienced out there. They got to start making plays. The big thing, guys, that I see down here, just a lack of confidence in their ability. Jones, good blocking up front, Springs Jones rumbles down inside the 20 yard line. This offensive line for Kansas State really done a nice job. Got left guard pulling around Beecham, Reisner the right tackle making some holes and, and, and at the end of the day Charles Jones is a patient back 26 yard gain and he's really been the quiet leader for this football team and they're going to ride his back when it comes to tailbacks in the backfield. 10 carries, 64 yards, and back into the red zone, continuing their pursuit of perfection. 31 for 31 with scores on the year. Jones, first down, and they'll put the chains away down inside the 10-yard line. You know, where are the linebackers filling? The fullback's leading through the hole. He's, he doesn't have anybody to block. He's just standing in space. 
just huge holes right now for this Kansas State offensive line that they're creating. And these linebackers are chasing ghosts out there. I have no idea. They're hitting gaps where the running back is going to the gap to the complete other side. I don't know if their minds are just spinning or what the situation is right now, but, but certainly not getting the job there done on the second level. They just hustled their nickelback, P.J. Locke, onto the field. Jones on first and goal, huge hole. He finds it, the ball is out in the end zone. No signal of touchdown, that would mean he broke the plane yeah. with the ball. Well, if he fumbled past breaking the plane, then it's obviously a touchdown. We haven't got a signal yet. The Recovered in the end zone. That's for a touchback. Wow. Well, we'll have to we'll have to see this one again. Remember, once it crosses the plane, Charles Jones going in. He's further review. He's met on contact by number 45, Anthony Wheeler. He's their leading tackler. Now the ball obviously comes out. The question is, we can't see exactly. Here we're going to get a look. It does oh. look like it is shy of the line yes. there. It's a nice angle. The ball is actually visual. Even though his back is to us, we can see the ball coming dislodged prior to the line. This is an excellent shot right here. You'll see. Watch Wheeler. Engage. Ball comes up. Out. I mean, I'll tell you what. It's a game of inches, and, and the referees are going to get this one right. Heck of a play. Texas needed that because I'll tell you right now, that looked like an easy walk-in touchdown. And Johnny on the spot. Wheeler, we haven't heard or talked too much too much today. He's their number one tackler, made a big play at the goal line. Kansas State has only turned it over four times all season. And now a fumble just short of the goal line on a big hit from Anthony Wheeler. And Ruled a touchback on the field and now reviewing it. Yeah, and Johnny on the spot there, number two, Chris Boyd getting on the football and recovering. I mean, that's the second part of the process, right, Beth? And you get that touchback, and all of a sudden, maybe some new energy and some new life, and maybe this defense can kind of flow off and read off that right now. That's their first turnover for Kansas State in the last three games. Again, I want to say his arm, Wheeler's left arm, because he looks like he's slipping. You know, he doesn't necessarily get a helmet on the ball. He pokes his left arm up. We're not going to see it, but that back angle, you see him get his left arm in there, punch the ball out. Just great awareness, just trying to really combat the fact that he was falling down. And After further review, the ruling on the field stands by first down. First fumble in three games. That's going to snap a streak of 56 consecutive red zone trips with points. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. And Buick, proud partner of the NCAA. Back here in Manhattan, Kansas, and K-State with the 21-7 lead over Texas, but the goal line fumble recovered by the Longhorns, and the streak is over. It will end at 56 consecutive trips into the red zone, putting points up on the board. It's just their fifth turnover of the season, and now Texas will try and seize some momentum. Bouchelle rockets one to the edge. Ramonte Foreman, the junior out of Texas City, with the catch. That'll be good for a first down. Bouchelle on the scramble. And he's got another first down toss. This to Dorian Leonard. You see how quickly they can get chunks of yards down the field. They're almost at midfield. Again, they're going to test this defense. They're going to take another shot here shortly. The previous play is under further review. Dorian Leonard was the receiver 
on that last play. And ball was thrown low, came back on a comeback route. Let's see if he actually caught it. Stands as an 11 yard gain under review back in a moment. Vacation. Back here in Manhattan, Kansas. And a reminder that this week's Monday Night Football matchup will see Brock Osweiler return to the Mile High City to lead the Houston Texans against the defending Super Bowl champs, the Denver Broncos. Coverage will begin Monday night. Countdown served up by Applebee's at 6. All the action, of course, also live on your app. So you got Brock Osweiler heading back to exchange pleasantries with John Elway right there. Yeah, I mean, listen, uh, not a lot of confidence in uh, wanting to pay him to come back. And Brock Osweiler is doing it right now in Houston. And Denver's been struggling quite a bit on offense. Haven't been able to get in the end zone much in their last two games. After the review, uh, it was ruled a catch for Texas. And now another catch here for Ja'Cory Warwick. Six yards on that pickup. Nice job, three straight completions, getting in a groove for your quarterback. On the ground, Deontay Foreman. He's got a flag down. We've also got a helmet off of one of the Texas players. Face mask, number 10. Number five is allowed to stay in the game because the helmet came off due to. That's a 15 yard penalty from the end of the run, automatic first down. So that's Lorenzo Joe, who will get to stay in the game because the helmet came off due to the penalty on Donnie Starks, the nickelback. A little help on the drive there for Texas. And quickly down inside the 35 yard line. Trying to cash in on a goal line turnover. Kansas State has not given up any points this year off of turnovers, and they are right there waiting for Foreman. Led by Elijah Lee, their leading tackler. Yeah, that was a nice uh, run blitz there on the outside. Elijah Lee, he's their hybrid linebacker. I've been able to talk much about him, but he can go sideline to sideline. Tremendous speed, big time tackler, and showing his presence on the outside edge. Bouchel trying to run away from the D's down to the 25-yard line. Going to be third and short. It's an element I like. You know, his legs are dangerous. He's got good awareness in the pocket. When it's not there, I think he should pull it down and run more often. He's got some nice chunks of yards right here. Third down and short. He's got to find a way to get a big play and convert this. Bounces that one in the turf. Short of the intended receiver, and he did not give his guy a chance. It's fourth down. Almost feel like he read uh, with the read option, stuck it in there too long. Couldn't get out of his hands quick enough, and Charlie Strong right now is deciding that this offense has to get something drummed up on fourth and three, and they're going to go for it. Five wide on fourth down. Pressure coming, Bouchel underneath, and it's dropped by Dorian Leonard for what would have been a first down, Texas. These, right on the digits. These are the things we're talking about right here. Opportunities to make plays. You need players to step up. It's a quick slant. Ball's right in the hands. He takes his eyes off it for just a second, and he's not able to bring the ball in. Defensive back Shelley's there to make the tackle, and again, that shuts down a potential opportunity for this Texas offense who hasn't had many, Beth, in this game. And you see the frustration over on that sideline. They twice today have moved it well for about 60 yards, Anthony, and the drive stalls around the 30, and they'll give it back to Jesse Ertz and K-State. Had trouble there with the snap. They set up the receiver screen there for Dominique Keith. 
even with the troubled snap and getting the ball out high, those receivers out front, Burton and Pringle, still being able to block those DBs on the outside. And they got to find ways to shed those blocks, play better, and make some of those tackles for a loss as we're known, this Texas defense is known for making. One of the things that K-State talked about when we talked to Coach Bill Snyder yesterday said we've got to find ways to enhance our passing game against Texas. Ertz has been terrific. He's 17 for 21, 160 yards. Incomplete there, but a flag is down. Looking for Burton, Boyd had the coverage, and for Bill Snyder, that game plan, he's getting his guys to execute it. No foul, hands to the face, defense number 44. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Despite the injury to Jesse Ertz. Uh, Hager's gonna come off the edge against Dalton Reisner, number 71, the right tackle, and get his hands to the face again. Young player making a mistake, getting his hands, can't have that lodged up in the face mask. Referee's right there to call it. And just when you think you got him in, in third and long, they get a first down. That's their second personal foul, their eighth accepted penalty, and there were a couple of more that Kansas State refused. Malcolm Roach is now in to replace Hager at that Fox position. On first and 10, Heath. Boy, they continue to impress with their blocking out on the perimeter. Yeah, Pringle is really, every one of these receivers are well coached, number one. Uh, and this is that Snyder ball we're talking about, right? Everybody's doing their job. They need 11 players on point. Watch Pringle just finishing this block all the way, throws Bonnie out of bounds. It's been a tough day for 24, and that just gives a wide receiver the opening he needs to make a big play on a quick wide receiver pass. Six different guys have now caught a ball for K-State. Justin Selman. A burst down inside the 40. The spin move gets him inside the 25. And another missed tackle in the back. Yeah, you know, again, it's it's the fullback cutting down the outside defender. Watch the 38 on the edge. Chop down that outside rusher. And it's just nobody home on the outside and doesn't get touched for 15 yards after the play. One thing I see down here, guys, all day Texas' safety, whether it's either Haynes or Hall, has been playing like 15, 16 yards deep, and you saw him come up there, too much space and opportunity for the running back to make him miss. At some point, I think they got to bring that safety up and help on the run. 25 yards on that run for Silman. We'll get a couple more there. Chris Nelson on the stop. You know, Rocky, I'll be quite honest with you. We've been talking about it in the first hit. I'm not quite sure what the space is right now for this Texas defense. I know you talked about lack of confidence, but let's get the strong safety down, help with the run, and force tight window throws, and force Ertz to make those kind of passes. Well, that's the thing, Anthony, is they're allowing K-State to dictate to them. Everything they do, their entire body language is on their heels. They're waiting for K-State to do something to them. They got some athletes out there. Take the fight to K-State. 180 yards rushing now, guys, for Kansas State. They'll keep it on the ground with Silman, and why not? A couple of whiffs again. For a Kansas State defense, Rocky, that's approaching 30 minutes out there on the field. Look, and we can talk all day long about how this defense is very inexperienced and their technique. This, this is simple tackling. I mean, this is stuff they've been doing since grade school, and for whatever reason, just not able to get it done. When you, when you have the ball, Beth, for over 30 minutes in a game and you're still in the third quarter, yeah. it's a little disheartening. It starts taking the wind out of your sails as a defensive player. And, you know, Kansas State is, is, is not in a position right now to slow this thing or to speed this thing up. They're going to wear and tear every play. Ertz incomplete. Intended for Pringle, and it's fourth down. A contested throw. You like it. I mean, that, that's what you need. Contest the throws. Be tight in coverage. That's Chris Boyd on the other side making it tough and force a poor throw by Ertz. This will bring on the two-time All-Big 12 kicker, Matthew McCrane. As long on the season as 42, he's hit on uh, nine of his 12 attempts. And this one will be a 35-yarder.
and it's good. Three more on the board for K-State. We're gonna go backstage, a day in the life with Willie the Wildcat next. Time now for our backstage pass with Willie the Wildcat. How does he get ready for the big day? Well, he's up before 7 a.m. Getting taped up, raring to go. Got to get those uh, get those calves warmed up, those hammies ready. Taking a breather in Bramlage Coliseum right next door, and then uh, meeting and greeting, including some young fans that love to see Willie. And then just prior to kick at 10:55 a.m., it's Willie making his entrance here at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. Looks like he can play. He's kind of yoked up for. Uh, <laughs> Willie's kind of a looks like a linebacker. Getting his push-ups in. It's been a lot for Willie to celebrate with a 24 to 7 lead. I, I wonder if he can do more push-ups than Chris Cotter. Chris. No way. No, no, 100 percent for sure he can. That is true. Especially on a Saturday morning like this. All right, how about Corey Clement? He can do some push-ups. He can power in from two yards out as well. Wisconsin now up 14 to 6 over Iowa over on ESPN. Meanwhile, Oklahoma State and Kansas. Kansas is giving the pokes a run right now. It's an Oklahoma State four-point lead, and they're driving again. Beth? Wow, that'd be huge for Rock Chalk. And Beth, the last couple weeks, I've seen Chris Cotter in his workout, which is entirely bench press the whole time, <laughs> so he can do some push-ups now. 25 sets of bench press for Cotter. Oh. It'd be nice if you taught him how to squat <laughs> once or twice. You know, just There's no squatting even thought of, Anthony. No. <laughs> Well, he sits at the desk, so we don't have to see, you know, the, the quads. So that's, that's probably what it is. All upper body. All right, Texas going to crank it up again offensively. Seeing more of Lorenzo Joe here in the second half. First down catch there from Shane Bouchelle. Texas's points all coming on an 80-yard touchdown pass in the second quarter. Bouchelle to DuVernay. Otherwise, it's been a struggle. And, it, and here's the difference, guys. The tackling of Kansas State. Yes, Texas is making some completions, but and what's, what they're doing, what can't, Texas is not doing is tackling. They're tackling these guys for one, two-yard gains. A run for Deontay Foreman to the 44. And Kansas State's defense has to make the tougher tackle. It's all one and one on space. We got guys right there breaking down, running through the offensive player, not reaching and trying to chase from the sides or behind. Still looking for their first third down conversion of the afternoon, and they've got it. Colin Johnson with the catch and a five-yard hookup. I would anticipate a little shake and go here at some point. A lot of quick passes. Now you've got these DBs thinking quick passes. Now you can get them over, maybe over the top and take a chance. Play action, Bouchel. Got another completion to Gerard Hurd, the former quarterback with the catch. Anthony, you mentioned the quick passing game of Texas. Yes, as a defensive player, you get tired of running up and making those tackles. You get a little bit antsy. That's a perfect opportunity at some point for Michelle to try a bomb. How about a big play on the ground? Foreman keeps on churning inside the 30. 15 more yards for Deontay. He's up over 85 now. Yeah, he's going to bounce over everybody. You know what it takes? It takes number 60, Geary, a 300-pounder to run down and actually bring him down. False start coming up here on Texas. Proud of the snap. Start. Offense. Number 13. A five-yard penalty. Could fast be too fast for Texas. Charlie Strong says, nope, let's keep it going. <laughs> he did, hey, uh, that's, that's the direction. You got to get lined up, Beth. I mean, that's the most important key to this offense, getting the play call. You see them all looking at the coaches and the boards, and then getting your feet set, ready to go. They run 85 plays per game. They haven't even hit 40 yet today. Foreman, another big hole up the middle. And he's down inside the 20. 15 yards for Foreman as he goes over 100 for the day. 
Gilbert, the offensive coordinator. I mean, you want to talk about a riser. He was coaching high school in 2011. Now he's arguably at one of the biggest universities and schools as an offensive coordinator here in Texas. Anthony, he also worked with a kid named Jimmy Garoppolo at Eastern Illinois, who's done some good things and a couple of starts there up in New England, and also Dane Evans at Tulsa last year. We've got our uh, time to the snap clock for you back in. They average about 20 seconds between snaps. They'll go a little over that right here on second and seven. Bouchelle finds a seam to the 10. Tanner Wood with the tackle. Another six-yard pickup. I like that play. I like losing, using the legs of Bouchelle. Now you come in with number 18. This is the 18-wheeler package. Now this isn't one yard. This is two yards to go on this third down and two. But he's big enough, Beth, at 249 pounds to run a lot of these defenders over. On the 11th play of the drive for Texas. Swoops. Gonna get it. He followed his two tight ends, Bluett and Beck, right through the hole. And I'll tell you what, if, if the whole running quarterback thing doesn't work out for Swoops, they should put his hand in the dirt and let him rush off the edge on third down. I saw him before the game, Beth. He is absolutely massive. He's going to stay in there, Rocky. They're going to try and use that advantage at 6'4", 250. Two tight ends bunched to the left. They're going to try and set the edge for Swoops. He's got it. A couple of stiff arms inside the five. Touchdown, Texas. And just like that, Beth, get themselves back in this game. And the one thing I have not seen Swoops do when they're in the red zone is pass out of this. So you as a defense at Kansas State, you've got to be loading up the box. You've got to be ready for this. He's just too big, too strong. You see defenders bouncing off his legs. They're going to go left. Everybody's on that side of the block. Watch the defenders try to get to his legs. Big stiff arm. You can't reach him. I'll tell you what now. He is a powerful runner as a quarterback. Since they started running the 18-wheeler, middle of last year, now 18 touchdowns for Tyrone Swoops, who probably by the end of the year will join Colt McCoy and Vince Young as the only Texas quarterbacks with over 3,000 yards passing and 1,000 yards rushing. He's getting close to that rushing mark as they go 12 plays, 75 yards in four minutes. And all the goodwill of a win last week against Ohio's uh, Iowa State would fade for Texas if they can't come back and get the win against Kansas State. With Baylor, OU, and West Virginia unblemished, you don't want to fall three games back. I think uh, from the national scene, everybody seems to think Oklahoma is going to pull this thing out. Uh, I like West Virginia right now. I like what they're doing at 5-0. The problem is they haven't played a team with a winning record in the, in the FBS, which is a problem. They get one today in TCU, though. Earlier today on game day, uh, consensus. They all thought that Oklahoma was going to end up winning uh, the Big 12 this year. Rocky? I was just saying, I love the way West Virginia's defense plays. They attack, they run that 3-3 stack, and also the way that quarterback makes plays. Anthony, that's your alma mater. Do you believe in West Virginia, Anthony? I believe in the fact that they're 5-0 right now, and they have an opportunity to win <laughs> oh, one today. Oh, you copping out, Ant. <laughs> that terrific defense led by their D.C., Tony Gibson, against Kenny Hill. One of the top numbers producer in the country. What you got for us, Chris Cotter? Got a little update on Oklahoma State against Kansas. Kansas has been game so far, but here come the pokes. Mason Rudolph is going to find Chris Carson. This is Carson's second touchdown of the day. One rushing, one receiving. 24-13 right now. Oklahoma State on top. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, the pokes are at 2-1, and 4-2 and two overall. Still very much in the thick of things. 24 to uh, 14, our score here. Kansas State with the lead over Texas. Jesse Ertz with a couple of rushing touchdowns. The passing touchdown to Pringle. Right now, they're hoping that they won't get burned by that goal line fumble that cost them a score. As Texas has made things interesting again as the final seconds will tick away here to close out the third quarter. I think the strongest thing 
if he can lean on something with Texas and their defense as their defensive line, they definitely need to start controlling a little more of this offense of line pressure that they're pushing against for Kansas State. Bouchelle and the Horns want the ball back. Can the defense help them out with a stop? A 10-point game. Texas grinding it out on the ground to that last score to make it a 10-point game. Back here in Manhattan, Kansas. K-State leading Texas 24 to 14. Deontay Foreman has gone over 100 yards rushing on the day, and that means eight straight games for him. That's the best in the country over Leonard Fournette, who will play later tonight. Donnell Pumphrey did it last night for the sixth time in a row for SDSU. Beth, every time he's touching the ball, he gets 5.8 yards of rush today. Five of his rushes of his 18 over 10 yards. This kid's a beast. You got to feed the beast, give him the rock, and he'll make some plays for you. That's terrific news for... Uh, Texas, they've got a little bit of momentum, although K-State does convert there on third down. They have had so much trouble coming into this house and running the football. Guys like Ricky Williams and Cedric Benson, Jonathan Gray, they've struggled mightily. Jamal Charles, yeah. now Foreman goes over 100. They need snaps. They need more plays. They can't get the ball. This defense has got to find a way to get off the field here in this final quarter of the game, or it's going to be much of the same what Kansas State has done. They have scored, K-State has, on four of their seven possessions today, but very efficient. They run it with Alex Barnes. Guys, Texas linebacker Malik Jefferson has not been on the field this entire series. Remember, he missed about the last second or two or three series of the first half. He does not look to be injured, so not sure what the situation is there. Rocky, thank you. Tim Cole is the next man up in the middle, number 30 in white. Where they can also go to their nickel. And to be quite honest, Beth, he's a senior. So, you know, he gets some opportunities, some reps, and maybe his experience can help. Cole is in there right now at one of the backer spots. Ertz, going to air it out, going deep. Incomplete, broken up at the 30-yard line intended for Pringle. And it was Jason Hall, the safety with a big play. Yeah, you never, always a vulnerable position when that safety is chasing. You see on the outside, Pringle just setting him up, and that safety's got to turn around quick. Never able to get his he head around, but he shoots his arm through the breadbasket of the receiver and gets that ball dislodged. That right there is a good play by the young man. So now it's third and eight. Ertz off the puff, the boot, lost the ball, was able to grab it back, and he may be about a yard shy of the first down. I don't know about that spot. They got real lucky right there. Texas popping that ball out. Just the ruling on the field is that the runner was short of the line of the game, fourth down. Johnny on the spot here. Ertz kind of holding that ball away from his body. Gets poked out by number 23, McCullough. The question is, though, did he get more yards in that spot? They will look at the spot while we take the timeout. 13-12 to play. Ruling on the field was a yard short of the first down, and that has now been confirmed. It's got to be indisputable video evidence. The right knee, it would seem like it was down. You can't tell it was. So if it was held off the ground, if you can't see it visually, it's un you can't make the switch up. The call was short, and that's what it will stay at. Kansas State uh, being coy, they've got both their offensive unit and their punting unit standing side by side over there on the sideline. Do you dare do it here from your own 34-yard line? You know, up 10. Your defense has been playing well. Yeah. There is a little momentum for Texas's offense. I mean, you could go out there and try to get them to jump off sides and then call a timeout. But again, you don't want to burn your timeouts. I'd say the punt unit, this is an opportunity to punt the ball here. 
Yeah, I think I would punt this ball right now. The thing that Texas has been lacking really this entire game is any sort of momentum. They get a big stop on fourth down with a short field. That's a way to get them back in yeah. this game. Well, the offense, well, is, the offense is going out there with Jesse Ertz. And they're... Texas is scrambling to get guys out onto the field. They're going to go for it on fourth down from their own 34-yard line. Well, the, the line judge on our side stepping on the 35-yard line, which is the area they need. If he marks the spot, it's going to be enough. Looks like they're getting a favorable spot here. Still no signal, now they're looking, and a big win for K-State on fourth down. It's been an aggressive day for Coach Snyder on these fourth downs. Didn't matter where on the field they've been today, 30 going in. He's called it three times in a row, three for three, Beth, I believe, today. And this offensive line needs to be credited. You put it in their hands to get the push, and they've done it three times. And now a false start on Kansas State. False start. Let's go back to Anthony, and uh, I think we need to count how many offensive linemen were out there for that push for K-State. That might be 7-0 linemen in the game. Yeah, it's, a, it's a heavy personnel here, two tight ends on the outside, and then they bring in the two fullbacks and a tailback. It's a loaded, uh, loaded backfield, and they get the push. And excuse me, it's two for two today on fourth downs. And uh, that, that's been the difference, Beth, in continuing these drives. And just as critical if they can continue the drive here. You're playing keep away from that lethal Texas offense, which uh, coming into the day was averaging 38 points per game. That's about two touchdowns more than they were a year ago. A top 25 offense in the nation, but just a couple of scores on the board so far for the Horns. As Kansas State now has uh, had the football for 20 more minutes and run 23 more plays than Texas. Look at the patience for Jesse Ertz and the legwork across midfield. Justin Sillman got the Hat on Jefferson. Uh, and they're basically using their pass rush against them. The defensive ends, watch them run up the field. Just taking themselves out of the play. You got one-on-one -on -one block. There's number 46, Jefferson, unable to make a play there. Doesn't really get blocked. And Ertz continues to beat Texas's defense with his legs. Anthony, the worst place on the football field is a yard past the quarterback on your rush. You said it. They're trying to be aggressive. They want to make a big play, get their de defense, this, their team back in this game. And again, Kansas State takes advantage of it. 16 yards on that run for Ertz. Silman with a spin, dancing around. Just enough to get back to the line of scrimmage. Well, celebrating its 12th year sponsoring the field goal, the uh, Good Hands field goal match. Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, Allstate has contributed millions in scholarship funds. Jesse Ertz, 175 yards passing for a touchdown. 16 for 75 yards rushing. And a couple of scores today. And Bouchelle's trying to wonder, you know, how much time's left here? Because I got to get on the field and get a chance. And he just doesn't have many chances at all. Not even a chance to throw some deep balls today. Play clock down to one. Just did get the snap off. And a flag behind the play as Ertz runs out of bounds. Pointing at one of the purple guys up front. Holding. Offense. Number 88. It's a 10-yard penalty. Replay second down. Not the tight end. Not man. the tight end. Yes, the <laughs> tight end, Anthony. You know, they don't throw him the ball much. He's got to do a lot of the dog, uh, dirty work. Sometimes you got to throw the dog a bone, though. You know, you got to let this kid <laughs> run out for a route. The penalty has been declined. Third down. I was going to say, let's get this team to third down. And uh, listen, third and long. 
Remember, the pass rush lanes. Let's not worry about getting a sack. Let's stay in our lanes. Good gap integrity here, pushing the pocket and s smothering the quarterback here so he can't beat you with his legs. It can't happen again on this drive. Pringle and Heath to the bottom of your screen. Ertz steps up, tries to float one downfield. It's intercepted. Edwin Freeman stays on his feet, trying to get to the outside, and it's the quarterback, Ertz, that cuts him down at the 35, and Jesse may have hurt himself on the tackle. It's his first critical mistake he's made today, and the one time he hasn't run, he should have taken off and ran on this one. Watch this hole on the left side open up wide. Once he steps up, you go to the sidelines, get the first down. Now he throws an awkward uh, throw across his body and flicks it up all arm. Freeman, nice job being in the right spot and taking this one. And you don't want your quarterback cutting a big linebacker down with his shoulder right there, especially when it's sore. It looks like Charlie Strong finally gets the break he deserves with his defense. Nice play by that young player. Just four turnovers for Kansas State through their first six games, and now the Longhorn defense has taken it away twice. 33 yards for Freeman on the INT return, and it's a short field. Don't be surprised. After a big turnover, you take a shot, try to get this defense on their heels. Foreman stuffed. Just did get back to the line of scrimmage. That's Elijah Lee in his 20th consecutive start today. He's on the Butkus watch list. Foreman trying to bull his way forward. It's going to be third and about six or seven. That is Jesse Ertz over on the sideline. Look at him trying to loosen up that shoulder. Remember, he hurt that last week against Oklahoma. And he may have re-injured it right here. Yeah, and he had to cut him with the right shoulder. And you can tell right there, there's an absorption of pain that he just felt from that chop block. And that's obviously going to the sideline. He's feeling it now. Punching receivers to the right and the left. Bouchel had it stripped loose. Ball is down on the deck, still fighting for it. And Texas was able to get it back after Jordan Willis got the strip. It was Bouchelle recovering. There's a reason why he's the number one sacker in the Big 12 and TFLs. Look at him rip on the outside. 6'5", 270 pounds, gets his right arm and pulls down the back of the ball. Unbelievable. How does Kansas State not fall in that? Heads up play by Bouchelle there on that fumble. Loss of 11, it's fourth down and 17. And Texas will go. And now they're gonna get the timeout. It will be their first. We will take the timeout as well. A big fourth down on the other side. ESPN College Football, brought to you by T-Mobile. Ditch your carrier and switch to the uncarrier. Two rushing and one passing touchdown for Jesse Ertz, but he's ailing right now. The K-State quarterback, a big fourth down, and the Texas offense is out there, Anthony. Yeah, I'll tell you, I mean, listen, if the quarterback's kind of hurt on the sideline and hurt his shoulder, it might be tough to throw. Maybe you try to pin him back a quick kick here. It's definitely got to be a bomb opportunity for Texas. Not a lot of options here on this play. Pressure coming. The deep ball down the sideline looking for Foreman. He had a hand yeah. on it and couldn't hold it. Absolute dime. He just threw a perfect pass right in Foreman's hands. Amont T. Foreman running down the sidelines. He just can't concentrate, pull that in. Watch the ball come down. I mean, literally right in his hands. A nice shot by the DB swiping it, but you got to get that ball pulled into your body. Missed opportunity for Texas. They turn it over on downs. Coming up tonight on ABC.
see it's a whiteout at Beaver Stadium. Penn State hosting undefeated Ohio State. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. And now let's take a look at this week's AP College Football Rankings brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. I mean, listen, you know, the top five, however you want to shake it out, all five of those teams are definitely in play as we move forward to the end of the season. You know, you got some big games. That Texas A&M Alabama game, Beth, I'll tell you what now. Texas A&M can find a way not only to run the ball against Alabama's defense, but Trevor Knight can raise that completion percentage up from 53 to get it in the 60s. They can make that a close one. After a fourth down stop, Kansas State will take it. And uh, Jesse Ertz is back out there at quarterback and throwing the football. It yeah. looked like he re-injured his shoulder that last drive. Look, he's shaking that arm quite a bit. Uh, that's why I thought maybe Texas should have punted that ball, pinned him back. I know they hadn't got a lot of snaps, but he might not be throwing too many more balls after that one. Guys, I saw Ertz warming up on the sideline before he went out for the series. Every through, throw he made, wincing in pain, there was no zip on that ball. If Texas is smart, they'll realize that. No, the ball can't be going downfield much here. Well, they've run it today for 221 yards, although Ertz has uh, had a hand in that as well. And here they go with the ground game. And across midfield, Justin Sillman has had himself a nice day today as the backup to Charles Jones. He's over 50 yards rushing. Texas had two defenders run into themselves there on that play. I mean, listen, you know it's going to be a run. They're not going to pass the football. Let's get some guys up in the box and push off and make some tackles. Right, right now, you know, you know what they got coming at you. You got a, an injured quarterback. You got to take advantage of it because you're running out of time, Beth. Third down and one, and a good push forward. They've got it. Chris Cotter's got an Oklahoma State update for us. With, did the ball come loose? Well, watch this pick right here by DeQuitt and Osborne. Just snags this right out of the air. And big fella is looking into the end zone. Will he get there? No, taken down inside the five, but... He'll leave the scoring to the fellows more used to it, like Randy Childs taking this over. So it's an Oklahoma State lead right now, 31-20, late third. First down. Thank you, Chris. Well, the ruling on the field is a turnover to Texas. The third of the day for Kansas State coming in. They were one of the best in the country in ball security. Yeah. And again, it's Edwin Freeman who had the interception a little bit ago. He's playing a heck of a game. Jesse Ertz on the quarterback sneak just kind of pushes with the pile and his momentum can, can continues to carry forward. The ball gets stripped out. Coach Snyder's trying to figure out. The ruling of a under There we go. Yeah, Coach Snyder wants to know what exactly happened there because it's a tough shot and angle for us to get it. I don't know if they're going to be able to get an angle themselves to see when exactly that ball popped out. And you see Ertz getting pushed. He's about to go to the ground. Question is, is the it looks like he's looking as if the ball's not in his hands. See his head tilted down, but again, that's all assumption. And there's nothing there, Beth, right, that's going to be able no. to make you change it. Well, the key is the, the ruling on the field, which was fumble. Yep. Anthony, do you, do you wonder if that injured right shoulder of Ertz, he can't hold on to that ball and squeeze it tight this stage of the game, knowing Texas is going to be ripping away at it? Yeah, you don't know what that pain is, and it could be shooting down his arm. Uh, you know, you get that kind of that tingling sensation down to your hands, but it looks like he can't bring his hands up from the snap. And he's getting pushed with three guys behind him going forward. He's never maybe able to get the ball up to his body behind the center. Ball seems to be still low with his hands. It's not up by his chest. He's got th two offensive running backs behind him pushing him. And maybe the ball, the momentum of the body scraping against his center gets the ball out again. That's all hypothetical talk. We can't see anything here. And like we said earlier, it's not going to change anything as far as a call standpoint. As it stands, three takeaways for the Texas defense. They have not cashed in on the previous two. Although one of those was the goal line fumble that saved him seven points. And I'm wondering, Beth, what exactly could the ref see that would think to him that that's a fumble? Yeah. On both sides, it looks like there's too many bodies to see anything of a football. 
not questioning his view. The ruling on the field, staying humble, first down. Like it just because a player picks the ball up and it's loose and a fumble, and we just assume it's, you can't assume. The ref has to see it yeah. to call it. Of course, we had no angle anywhere to even justify that call, so we're assuming he had a visual on that fumble. I'll tell you what, Edwin Freeman did a terrific job of selling that to the officials as well. So Texas has it back, down 10, 7.07 to go. That's the time they have to work with to try and stay above 500 on the season. Well, Texas gets a turnover last series. What happens? Two runs, they don't get a first down, and they end up throwing it on fourth down and turning the ball over. They get another opportunity, but you're down 10, six minutes and 45 seconds to go. You got to make some plays. With the true freshman quarterback, Shane Bouchelle, that was tipped. Intended for Oliver, I think it was Trey Deshaun, who got a hand on it, and it's third down. And it's just like that, Ben, third and six for this offense. Got to execute. Kansas State right now has done everything they can to stop the speed of this tempo of this offense. Coaches want to make sure they get the perfect play against this defensive matchup to Bouchel. And they're going to run for it. Foreman pushes forward for the first down. Seven yard run to the 41. He takes a big shot there, but I'll tell you what, you better bring the wood when you're trying to tackle number 33. And that's confidence in your big back on third and six. 117 yards rushing on the day for Foreman. Catches made by Colin Johnson and a flag. We're gonna mark him around the 33 yard line. Colin Johnson is a specimen too, by the way. 6'6", 215 pounds. He's a true freshman. Did a backflip on the field. Did they pick the flag up? Because it's nowhere to be seen anymore on the field. What got going on here? Kansas State has been issued with a sideline warning. Please set the clock to 618, 618. Sideline warning for K-State. Looks like the line judge maybe tripped over someone or a coach on the sideline on Kansas State side. You see Charlie Strong pushing his guys back and making sure they don't get a warning. But a big play and catch there by the two freshmen. Started was that the issue? Please set the game clock to 618 and stop. I said, the catch is made by Oliver. Streaking down inside the 10, and it's first and goal, Texas. As a strong safety, you live and die by the choices. Dante Barnett tried to go for the pick and deflection, missed it, big play. Ooh. Boucher hey. chooses not to give it to Foreman, and Willis will throw him down for a loss. I'm impressed by Willis, man. He is a big guy, he's yoked up, big arms, one of the best pass rushers in the country, he gives you maximum effort. Every single play, one of my favorite players in this game so far. This time he will give it to Foreman. Pushing and shoving after the play. Let's see where they're gonna mark him here with a third down coming up. K-State will get some fresh legs in there. Third and goal from the nine. Well, they're going to have to get it in here. And they're down 10. <laughs> B. 
Blitz is coming. Ball is down on the deck. And a bad snap will force fourth down. And the ball back out around the 20. And a loss of yeah. 10. Play clock was going down. They were trying to get the snap count and the coverage. You watch, watch the running back here. He goes up to the line of scrimmage. We don't show that there, but he goes up and has to give the protection. Well, that time taken, that clock's going down. They get a bad snap and pushes them back. Now they got to go for a field goal. 35 yarder, Trent Domain. And he missed it. No good. And instead of getting within a score, they are still down 10, 4-0-3 to play, and Texas is running out of time. Four oh three to play, Kansas State leading Texas, 24 to 14. Tonight, after a full day of college football, don't miss Sports Center at night. Nicole Briscoe and John Buchigras they'll also have uh, all the highlights from the Cubs and Dodgers as Chicago tries to get to the World Series at Sports Center at night. Tonight, after Ole Miss LSU over on ESPN, it's a new quarterback in for K State, Joe Hubner, who replaced the injured Jesse Ertz last week against Oklahoma is back on here to try and close it out with Ertz ailing. Justin Silman gets the carry. And your scouting report on Hubner is he's not as dangerous with his legs as Ertz. So you want to play on the high side of him, handing the football off and containing him in the pocket and forcing him to pass. It took him a while for him to warm up when he came in the game last week when Ertz went out of that football game against Oklahoma. So that, that's kind of where you got to go off right now. You got a, a, a unique opportunity to get off the field and get the ball back. And now here you see that man-to-man -man press coverage. More guys in the box. Goodner will hand it off. Texas is right there to stuff it. Charlie Strong will call a timeout. They will have one remaining. Ertz today, very efficient. He had the, the interception, but he also Texas ran for a couple of scores. He threw for seconds. a touchdown. And he got hurt after the INT making the tackle. And as, as efficient and effective as Kansas State has been at times tonight, working with their game plan, Anthony, it's also been a case of missed opportunities for Texas. They are plus three in the turnover department, but they haven't cashed any of them in for points. Yeah, you're right. And the big story here is, is Kansas State. They've dominated this game as far as time and possession. Uh, one thing I can say about Jesse Ertz, he's tough. I mean, yeah. he came into this game with a shoulder injury. You know, he had to make that tackle, which was unfortunate on that interception. But it's been his show today. He's taken this team on his shoulders. He's ran the ball. He's thrown the ball well above the expectation level what I would think because he's been an inconsistent passer and he's definitely showed us that he's improved even with the bum shoulder and I give him a lot of credit today going against a Texas defense that quite honestly he's taken advantage of 74 percent his completion rate today came in sub 50 did Ertz so a nice job there now Hubner trying to run for the first down he'll come up short and a tackle by Chris Boyd and they're going to be short here. They yep. call the timeout last series, and then we'll get the set the last one. So it's fourth and two. Punting unit will come on. Texas, we mentioned takes their third and final game. Please set the clock to three minutes even. Three zero zero. So no timeouts left for Texas, with three minutes to go and a punt coming. You can kick off week seven of your NFL Sunday on ESPN. First at 10 a.m. Eastern, it's the NFL Insiders, and then at 11, Sunday NFL Countdown. It's all streaming on your ESPN app as well. You've got to go back to November of 1988. That's the last time that Texas lost a game with a plus three turnover margin. They had a... a dropped pass on the goal line. They had the dropped fourth down conversion earlier today, but still an opportunity 
for their quarterback and wideouts to get something done here with three minutes to go. And you know, the lack of execution on offense is because of the fact that they haven't got many plays. Yep. I mean, that's been the big story of this game. Defense has been on the field the entire day. 55 plays so far for Texas. They came in averaging 85 <laughs> per game. You know me and my bad math, but I believe that's 30 fewer opportunities. Nick Walsh's punt is away. Amante Foreman will let that bounce out of bounds. Just outside the 40. 30 yards on that punt. Shane Bouchelle, the true freshman out of Arlington, Texas. He's got an 80-yard touchdown pass today to Devin DuVernay. You're going to have to start taking some shots if you're Texas. I thought initially in this game, with the short passing game they set up, they didn't take as many shots down the field. After the turnovers, Beth, I thought it was a premium opportunity for this offense to take shots. Now you're forced, and this is Kansas State knows what you got to do in this, these uh, situations. Duvernay looking left, buying himself some time, tries to lob it over the top, incomplete. But it looks like a defensive holding penalty is going to be called on D.J. Reed on the coverage of Colin Johnson. Colin Johnson's a tough matchup. 6'6", 215. See some of the coaches saying that ball was uncatchable out of bounds. Pass defense, number two. 15-yard penalty for the previous spot. Automatic first down. Uh, DJ Reed, I think they're, it's their best cover corner for Kansas State. See the length of nine, a little shake. As the quarterback rolls, he turns uh, up the field, and he's holding and grabbing him there. They could have grabbed, they could have called a hold there on the DB. Either way, there was interference. Gonna get caught from the backside, and it's Willis. Ball is free, and they're gonna rule the quarterback down on the sack for Jordan Willis. The runner was down. Yeah, I'll tell you, Willis going against number 58, Hodges, who didn't start this game. And again, if you're a quarterback and you're going to scramble, if you go back, understand that's where the defensive linemen are rushing up the field. Bouchelle stepping up, going to have to run with it. Wrapped up at the 45. Clock continues to run. Down to 2.15 to go. Got to get a 50-50 ball up here. Your tallest receiver on the field is number nine at the bottom of your screen. He's only a true freshman, though. Do you count? on him to go make that catch for you to get you this first down. Going deep for Colin Johnson, incomplete, and it's fourth down. The missed field goal looming so large just a few moments ago. A missed opportunity to make this a touchdown game. Instead, the 10-point lead for Kansas State An area of the field that they might to try to work here. If they don't bring a blitz, maybe get the running back up the middle of the field and float one past the middle linebacker. Bouchelle to the end zone, contact and a penalty flag is down in the secondary. And they get bailed out and I think this is gonna be a clear pass interference by Shelley. Receiver falls down. Pass interference, defense number eight. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. One thing about Burt, the wide receiver, he's the fastest man on the field. This kid wants to run in the 2020 Olympics. You see, get his right hand, kind of push him. Again, actually pulls his face mask also, so referee's right on top of it. He can't let that one go, and that was on fourth down, Ben. New set of downs for Texas. 143 to play. This has been such a house of horrors, a rough road trip for Texas. They have not won here since 2002. Bill Snyder has had his way at home against the Longhorns, and now Texas trying to rally late 
and get their season back on track. A few things for uh, Shane Bouchelle here. He's got no timeouts, a minute 43. You catch the ball, pass the first down sticks. Got to get your guys up to the line of scrimmage. This is the one thing I don't like about plays coming from the sideline. It takes a little bit for that to happen. See if they have a plan to get this thing moving if they make a big play. Bouchelle, they hand it off to Foreman. He wriggles free from a tackler and then taken down at the 27. That, that was actually a, a brutal play call, in my opinion. I mean, you can't hand the ball off. You're guessing you might be able to get it through those lines, but there's a lot of movement going up front, making a big play for Kansas State. Time of the essence with no timeouts left. They'll throw it underneath. Foreman making a play down inside the 10. It's first and goal, Texas. It's an angle route right in the middle of the field. That was a good matchup there. Everything spread out. The middle's wide open. That's a good job by Sterling Gilbert calling that play. They're going to run it, and there's nothing there. I'm not quite sure why we're running the football, Beth. The clock is ticking. We got receivers spread out all over the place. Pass the football. The clock's now under a minute. You're wasting valuable time. You need two scores, not one. Final minute of play. Bouchelle to the end zone. Touchdown, Texas. Dorian Leonard. We've been waiting for Dorian Leonard to get his opportunity as our early impact player. And he's a favorable target and a nice matchup. Make sure his feet, the ball was complete. Ball's tucked into his right arm, foot is down. Control down to the ground, that's well done. He caught it one arm, that's pretty good for that, for that young man. And he's 6'4", it's a matchup problem going against Shelley on that play, who's only 5'9". The extra point necessary here to get within a field goal. The ruling on the field is a touchdown. That plays under further review. So they are able to drive down and score in two minutes and seven seconds. And that right foot, although it's close to the white line, he gets it in. And that's a heck of a job securing the football. You see that purple between the toe, the white shoe, and the white line? That's actually helpful in this situation. And the strength to have that ball in the one arm. I give him a lot of credit on that catch. And two plays come to mind. The fumble on the goal line for yeah. Kansas State that would have put this one out of reach. And the missed field goal earlier in this After fourth quarter review, for Texas. Field is touchdown. Otherwise, we'd have been tied from the Longhorn perspective. Now, if you can make this kick, you're leaning, relying on an onside's opportunity to try to get the ball back where your percentages are just way too low. Frank Domain. Extra point is good. Kansas State 24, Texas 21. 46 seconds to go. Texas is out of timeouts, about to kick off. Let's take a look back with our Polaris Drive recap. The Dorian Leonard again. And this round is going to run an in cut. The top of the screen here. Going to run the in cut on the on the back line. And they're just going to stay with him the whole time. Watch this. Gets around. Takes the long route around the DB. And keeps his foot in. Great concentration. It's well done. Good pass. It's a heck of a catch with one arm. Both sides will have their hands unit. Some good leapers. Oh, and Anthony, I was just going to say here, remember Dorian Leonard, he's the one who had that big drop on fourth down earlier in the game, comes up big in a crucial moment here at the end of this game. So it is Trent Domain. Here comes the onside kick. They get the high hop, but it will go out of bounds to Kansas State. And with Texas out of timeouts, the Wildcats in great shape. He just kicks it too hard, Beth. I mean, doesn't give any of his guys a chance. 
Free kick out of bounds by the kicking team. Kansas State will take the ball after a five-yard penalty with the spot of the ball went out of bounds. First down. And unfortunately, it kind of sums up the day of Texas, whether it be missed tackles, uh, not being able to get off the field on third downs, uh, dropping some critical balls. Uh, th those have been the differences in this football game. Give the credit to Kansas State. Their plan today was executed perfectly on offense, and they controlled the football game. Yeah, and they can work the final 46 seconds right here to pick up another win over Texas. Joe Hubner takes a knee. They'll have to snap it once more. And the Cats will improve to four and three. Texas will fall to three and four. And a head shake from the Longhorns. It's been a tough season right now for Texas. And and unfortunately, the defense, even against this slower tempo, tempo of Kansas State, you still see the errors taking place. And I know Charlie Strong, he's an excellent, excellent defensive coach. There's no question about it, bar none. But he has to be able to get this defense much better. Right now, there's no consistency with this team. Texas has dropped four of its last five. And for Kansas State and Bill Snyder, another win at home against the Longhorns, fifth straight against Texas. 24-21, the final. Jesse Ertz responsible for three touchdowns for the Cats. Coming up next, college football scoreboard. Then it's Purdue, Nebraska, or TCU, West Virginia. Right now, let's get you back to the studio.